so is gpsr driving you potty is it going to have a massive impact on your business and mean that it's looking like you won't be able to sell into the eu anymore i'm hearing that that's the case for many small businesses but i'm also hearing small businesses who are talking about can they find ways around figuring out how to get an EU representative, whether it's thinking that it could be a friend or a family member who lives inside the EU, or hearing that somebody knows somebody who will do this for a super cheap price for you. And also the discussions that are happening about just how much some of these companies are charging for this. How do you know whether someone can or can't do it for you or whether it's worth that really expensive charge well i think we can find that out i think we just need to go back to the regulations and look at the exact responsibilities of an authorized representative seeing who they can or can't be according to the regulations because that's what we're meant to be following we're not following hearsay or supposition or guesswork Let's go back to the regulations. But what I also want to look at is I also want to look at manufacturers' obligations because ultimately, if you are going to go to the effort of getting that EU representative and that's a, you found a viable way for you, which that would be absolutely fantastic, you still need to comply with everything else. And I'm assuming that as you're here, you probably make your own products. If you're eagle-eyed, you'll notice I have three tabs open here at the top. The reason I have three tabs is not because we're looking at three different documents, it's because I have opened them up at three different places inside the regulations so I don't have to scroll all over the place. Um, so we are looking at the documentations. I will make sure this link is in the um, description. So if you want to go and have a look, you can for yourself. And first of all, we're going to start looking at Article 3, the definitions. And if we scroll down to 9, so 9 covers authorised representative. So what does this mean? What actually is their definition of an authorised representative? So it means any natural legal person established within the union. So someone who is meant to be there, someone who is legally there, who has received a written mandate from a manufacturer to act on the manufacturer's behalf. So who is going to act basically as a middleman between you and the authorities, but the written mandate means it is a contract. It's not just a bit of a conversation over the phone, that this is a contract in writing, um, and it's in relation to specified tasks with regard to the manufacturer's obligations under this regulation. So this is why we're going to look at the manufacturer's obligations, because basically this person is acting as your representative is a legal entity for you to make sure that you are covering your obligations and that that is being communicated properly as well. So where should we go next? Let's look at the obligations of manufacturers. So obligations of manufacturers. Now, this is not short, this section, but we're going to work through it um, because I think it's really important. So when placing products on the market, now, I'm actually going to scroll back here for a minute and go, what does on the market mean? Well, if you're here, you're probably selling online, which distant sales. So what does that mean? Products offered for sale online or through other means of distant sales so over the phone, anything like that, shall be deemed to be made available on the market. So I can see why it's relevant. If the offer is targeted at consumers in the union. So if you are targeting people in Europe, in the EU, then this is you, you know, making it available on the market. An offer for sale shall be considered to be targeted at consumers in the union if the relevant economic operator directs by any means its activities to one or more of the member states. So you only have to, even if you're selling to one member state, this applies to you. So when placing products on the market, manufacturers should ensure that those products have been designed and manufactured in accordance with the general safety requirement laid down in Article 5. We're not going to look at Article 5 specifically in this video. We can in another one. If you want me to, please drop me a comment below and we can easily and happily go through that. But for the moment, I'm going to assume that you are meeting the general safety requirements. You probably already were if you are a the business owner that I think you are.
So let's move on. Before placing their products on the market, manufacturers shall carry out an internal risk analysis and draw up technical document documentation containing at least a general description of the product and its essential characteristics relevant for assessing its safety. Remember, there will be more information that's relevant to this inside Article 5. But basically, you're going to have to do a thorough risk analysis that you are testing your products, that you are confident that they are safe. And as such, you are drawing up what they are calling technical do documentation, but it's at least a general description of the products. It's not necessarily that technical, depending on your product. And it's got the essential characteristics that are relevant for assessing safety. So it wants to know what have you done to assess the safety? Where appropriate with regard to possible risks related to the product, the technical documentation referred to in the first sub paragraph, I need to get my teeth in, shall also contain as applicable an analysis of the possible risks related to the product and solutions adopted to eliminate or mitigate such risks, including the outcome of any report related to tests conducted by the manufacturer or another party on their behalf. So if you run any tests on your products, then obviously you need to have the outcome of those reports included. Um, and you need to be talking about your analysis of possible risks related to the product and any solutions that you have adopted. Please remember here, I am not a lawyer. I am reading these. I'm usually pretty good at understanding them, interpreting them, but like anything all of these are open to interpretation they try with the language that they use with the very long sentences to cover all eventualities but they don't always so if you have a different interpretation to me that's absolutely fine because i'm not a lawyer i'm not telling you that this is exactly how it is but you need to be confident that you are complying with these regulations as they're laid out so B, here is the list of any relevant European standards as referred to in Article 7, point A, or the other elements referred to in Article 7, point B, or Article 8 applied to meet the general safety requirements laid down in Article 5. You're going to find this in all legal jargon that everything relates back to everything else. As I said, we're just looking at your obligations here, and the obligations are that you meet your European standards referred to in Article 7 and in Article 8 about the general safety requirements um, of Article so what does all that mean it means if you've needed to apply ce marking to your products before you still will need to it's basically that so go through check the articles you need to go through these you need to understand if you're going to sell into europe you are going to have to comply with these so you need to understand them and make sure that you are complying with any european standards so where any of the European standards, health and safety requirements or elements as referred to in Article 7 or Article 8 have only been partly applied, the manufacturer shall identify the parts which have been applied. So you've got to go through and look at the details. Um, the reason, remember, we are going through this is we are looking at it from the perspective of making sure that you can fulfill your obligations, because if you fulfill yours, then an EU representative can help you cover all of this inside the EU. But you can't have an EU representative and not do any of this, which is why we are looking at it. Um, manufacturers shall ensure that the technical documentation referred to in paragraph two is up to date. So that's what we um, were looking at here. So it's um, manufacturer's responsibility to ensure it's up to date. So if you change anything, if you change a fabric, if you change a material, if you use a different material for something, then you have to keep it up to date. And they shall keep that documentation at the disposal of the market surveillance authorities for a period of 10 years after the product has been placed on the market and make, make that documentation available to those authorities upon request. Now, when we look at the EU representatives obligations you're going to notice it doesn't specify a time frame in there but this does so that documentation has to be available for market surveillance authorities for a period of 10 years after the products were placed on the market so if you're putting a new product on the market today that documentation has to be available for a period of 10 years and available to those authorities on request and those authorities are going to your EU representative. So 
One to bear in mind. Manufacturers shall ensure that procedures are in place for products produced in series to remain in conformity with the general safety requirement laid down in Article 5. Um, if they're produced in series, you've just got to make sure that everything's still in place. They're just covering everything here. They're making sure they've dotted the I's and crossed the T's and that there's no loopholes. You can go, oh, well, actually, that's this, this, this. That doesn't apply. It does. It applies. Um, this is important as well, this next one. Manufacturers shall ensure that their products bear a type, batch or serial number or other element enabling the identification of the product and um, which is easily visible and legible for consumers or where the size and nature of the product does not allow it that the required information is provided on the packaging or in a document accompanying the product. So if you don't already have a type, batch or serial number, or something else that identifies the product that is something that you would need to consider adding to your process. Manufacturers shall indicate their name, their registered trademark if you have one, um, registered, registered trade name or trademark if you have one, their postal electronic address and where different the postal electronic address of the single contact point of which they can be contacted. That single contact point is your EU representative. So your EU representatives need address postal address and electronic address needs to be on the product or on the documentation that comes with the product. That information should be placed on the product I preempted or where that is not possible on its packaging or in a document accompanying the product. Manufacturers shall ensure that their product is accompanied by clear instructions and safety information in a language that can be easily understood by consumers as determined by the member state in which the product is made available on the market. That requirement shall not apply where the product can be used safely and as intended by the manufacturer without such instructions and safety information. So if you need to include safety information, if there's washing instructions, if anything at all, really, if there's any kind of clear instructions and safety information, it has to be in a language that's going to be understood by your consumers. Now, this does not specify that it has to be in the native language of the country or the state that you are selling into, but that would be my understanding of that. Um, if you can argue the fact that English is understood by all of your customers who buy in a country, then that one is up to you. Um, Again, this is open to interpretation. I'm not a lawyer. I'm here just to point things out. So where a manufacturer considers or has reason to believe on the basis of the information in that product, in the manufacturer's possession, that a product which is placed on the market is a dangerous product, the manufacturer shall immediately, I mean, this is a no-brainer, really, but take corrective measures necessary to bring in an effective manner of the product into conformity, including a withdrawal or recall as appropriate. Now, one of the things that is covered inside these regulations, I don't think is in this section, but a recall now has very specific guidelines in these regulations. You need to contact the consumers directly. Just put it, get it, ask, getting a leaf notice put up on your website is not enough. They are very adamant in these regulations that consumers need to have a really easy, free way of responding to any recalls. So obviously that would be part of your obligation as well. Um, your obligation is to inform consumers thereof in accordance with Article 35 or 36 or both and informed through the Safety Business Gateway. That is a website that the EU Commission has set up um, and the market will let me start that sentence again. Informed through the Safety Business Gateway, the market sur surveillance authorities of the member states in which the product has been made available on the market thereof. So you need to know exactly which of the member states you are selling into and which you aren't, if there is any difference. Um, so that when you inform them, you are very, very clear about where this has been available for sale. For the purpose of points B and C of the first subparagraph, the manufacturer shall give details in particular of the risk to the health and safety of consumers and of any corrective measure already taken, and if available, of the quantity by member state of products still circulating on the market. So you need to know exactly how many products you've sold and to where, so you can let them know. I mean, it does say if available, but I mean, really, they want that information to be available, and they want to know what the risk is. I mean, is the risk something of fatal um, concern or is it something minor? Now, 
they are not going to distinguish and really have a difference if there's a risk to health and safety they don't really care which it is but obviously one is much more serious than the other and it will be treated in such but any risk to health and safety that's what we help that's what the whole regulations are about so the commission shall ensure that the information meant to alert consumers can be provided by manufacturers through the safety business gateway and is made available to consumers on the safety gateway portal without undue delay so the onus is on you the responsibility is on you no delay you've got to let them know no worrying about it no stressing about it just do the job let them know manufacturers shall ensure that other economic operators responsible persons and providers of online marketplaces in the supply chain are cons concerned are kept informed in a timely manner of any safety issue that they have identified now when we say online marketplace the first one that comes to my mind is etsy i can't imagine that etsy right now as it currently stands is going to be that interested in you informing them but it is going to be a responsibility of these regulations so i'm hoping they actually will set up a process for that but if they don't or if any other marketplaces don't then the minimum you're going to need to do is remove the item from sale so manufacturers shall make publicly available communication channels such as a telephone number email address it uses me when it says electronic address when it means email address or dedicated section of their website taking into account accessibility needs for persons with disabilities enabling consumers to submit complaints and to inform manufacturers of any accident or safety issue they've experienced with a product so we actively now need to make sure that it isn't just that they fill in a contact form or they've got to go hunting for an email address you want to sell into the eu you are going to need to make sure that this is clear and obvious on your website um well you potentially have a dedicated section but it's i would put it within the legal documentation where you have a page that basically gives all of this information or this is how you make a complaint or make us aware of any issues manufacturers shall investigate complaints submitted and information received on accidents that concern the safety of products they made available on the market and which have been alleged to be dangerous by the complainant and shall keep an internal register of these complaints as well of product recalls and any corrective measures taken to bring the product into conformity so they're going to you go investigate you've got to pay take all of these seriously um your outcome of the investigation is obviously where you can make any judgments um but if there's any concern over the safety of products that is available on the market in the eu um alleged or actually happened you have to keep this log this register so basically a folder of those complaints as well as any product recalls and corrective measures that you've taken that is one of your responsibilities the internal register of complaints shall only store those personal data that are necessary for the manufacturer to investigate the complaint about an alleged dangerous product. Such data shall only be kept as long as necessary for the purpose of the investigation in any event no longer than five years after the data have been entered. So basically, you've got five years to keep that data. Whew. What do you think? Is that doable? I mean, I know we haven't looked at Article 5 or Article 7 and 8, but I'm, as I said earlier, I am assuming that your product is safe. The fact that you're here, the fact that you're considering this, you wouldn't do that if your product isn't safe. But you do need to go through those articles and check. So those are the obligations of manufacturers. What we have learned, we have learned that there is a period of 10 years after the products have been placed on the market that the technical documentation has to be available for market surveillance authorities. Um, you've got to have batch or serial numbers so that particular product ranges can be identified and they're gonna be clearly illegible, clearly easily visible and legible for consumers um you've got to make sure that your postal address electronic address is with the product or on the product and the same goes for your eu representative i know they call it the single point here but that is what they mean um and also we know that clear instructions and safety information in a language can be easily understood by consumers how you interpret that is up to you um and basically, you've got to react really, really quickly if anything does happen and you've got to take it seriously and you've got to make it easy for people to report any issues to you. 
So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an insight as to your obligations. And the reason that's important is because your authorised representative is helping you. Let's go back to this first point number nine. Uh, a written mandate from a manufacturer to act on the manufacturer's behalf in relation to specified tasks with regard to the manufacturer's obligations under this regulation. So their job is to help you fulfill your obligations, which is why we have to go through these. So these are now the obligations of authorised representatives. I realise there's an awful lot of information as we're going here. I will make sure that the links are below and you know which articles to look at to go through these yourselves. So, deep breath, we know who the authorised representative can be, we know your obligations, obviously you need to dig in deeper further into the articles to get more detail, but we know the overview of your obligations. Now we're going to look at the overview of the obligations of authorised representatives. So, a manufacturer may, by means of written mandate, appoint an authorised representative. The reason it says may appoint an authorised representative, I believe, is because if you are based inside the EU, you do not need to. Whereas if you are outside the EU, you do need to. An authorised representative shall perform the tasks specified in the mandate received from the manufacturer. The authorised representative shall provide the market surveillance authorities with a copy of the mandate upon request. So that is a really important document because it outlines all the tasks that you're expecting your authorised representative to do and that has got to be available for the market surveillance authorities to see and read. Um, the mandate shall allow the authorised representative to perform at least the following tasks. I mean, I think this is really important. This is the minimum, the bare minimum they need to do. So they need to provide a market surveillance authority upon the authority's reasoned request, so as long as it's reasonable, with all information and documentation necessary to demonstrate the safety of the product in an official language which can be understood by that authority. Now, earlier, we were talking about languages in particular member states. This one is worded slightly different. This one says an official language. So I've seen conversations where people are saying English is an official language of the EU. Great. In which case, if you're confident that that is correct, I'm going to hold my hand up and say, I haven't checked that fact. But if you're confident in that, then your documentation can be in English. If you feel that it needs to be a different official language, um, which can be understood by the authorities, then you make that decision. But basically, your representative is going to have to have all of your safety documentation because they've got to demonstrate the safety of the products so anything that you've created any all those technical documentations everything you've got any reports you've got any tests that it's been through they need to have a file with that information that goes alongside the mandate that you have for them to act on your behalf so they also need to be able to understand that documentation, I believe. And the reason I say that is because of this next one. So where the authorised, it's not a case of just taking it and sticking it on a shelf. They need to go through it and they need to understand it because where the authorised representative considers or has reason to believe that a product in question is a dangerous product, they have to inform the manufacturer thereof. So I believe they should be able to go through that documentation and go, yeah, great, this is a safe product or, oh, you've got an issue there. Um, because they will understand what is required within the EU for your product to be safe. But also, just think they're going to need to be able to answer questions about it. They're going to need to be able to talk about it. They're not, they're not there just to go, there you go. They are there to act as that middleman between you and them. So they need to be confident that that documentation is correct and the best way for them to know that documentation is correct is because they understand documentation that's my interpretation of that yours might be different informing the competent national authorities about any action to take taken to eliminate the risks posed by products covered by their mandate through a notification in the safety business gateway where the information has not already been provided by the manufacturer or upon instruction of the manufacturer. So your representative can go into the safety business gateway and send that information in for you. Um, my original understanding was is that that was their job and was their role, but actually this seems to suggest that you could be doing that instead. So 
I mean, let's just reread that. Informing the competent national authorities about any action taken to eliminate the risks posed by products covered by their mandate through notification in the business gateway, where the manu information has not already been provided by the manufacturer, so they're your backup plan for it, um, rather than necessarily having to be the person who does do it. Um, you then have to cooperate with, they have to cooperate, sorry, not you, they have to cooperate with competent national <laughs> authorities. I'm amused by the word competent. I'm not quite sure why that needs to be in there. You'd have thought that was a given, but they've included it. With the competent national authorities at their request on any action taken to eliminate in an effective manner the risks posed by products covered by their mandate. I'm going to read that one again. Cooperating with the competent national authorities at their request. So if they are contacted, they have to respond on any action taken to eliminate in an effective manner the risks posed by products covered by their mandate. So again, they need to know exactly what you're doing with any safety issues. So I think we've pretty much covered everything that we need to. The question is, are you happy for a friend or family member to do that or for someone to do that on a really cheap, low cost price maybe you are maybe you're not at least now you know exactly what it is that they aren't meant to do this is about you collating the information together and presenting your documentation to prove that your product is safe and your eu representative has that on your behalf and then liaises between you and the market surveillance authorities who are out there to make sure that products are safe but obviously you do have other responsibilities you need to make sure that people can report any issues and you, you act on them and investigate them there are bigger issues at stake here so it's more than just having an EU representative you need to make sure they've got the documentation and that you're doing all the work in the background as well so tell me what's your feedback on this do you think that you're going to ask a family friend or someone you know to do this for you are you going to take a risk on contacting someone who has said that they'll do this for um, a low cost amount of money and if you do and that works out please let me know i want to know my instinct is that this is too important for that and that if someone's offering that they're only going to do it for a short period of time when actually remember your manufacturer obligations state that your product documentation has to be available for 10 years after being on the market so thoughts let me know in the comments below i'm nicola smith founder of a handcrafted business i'm actually here to help you with marketing your business and helping you to sell more products but I really believe that when you're selling your products, that you need to comply and follow the regulations in all the countries that you sell in. It's just so important, which is why I want to share and help you figure your way through this. So if you found any solutions, if there's anything you know, if there's anything that you've figured out along the way, let me know. Let's get that information shared and out to everybody else. So hopefully not as many small businesses are having to close down their EU market. Bye for now.